All right, the title of the message today is Alcohol Androgenation. From drug to drag. Drug to drag. Dear Father, we do pray that you help us as we complete this series this week. Father, I do pray that you would use this, Lord, to awaken Christians across this land, Father. Bring it to the right people to hear, Father. But we do pray for our children. We do pray that you save this generation, God. Help us, Lord, to see what they are doing to us. Help us to understand it. And, Father, I do ask that you would give us the ability, the willingness to just not let these poisons hurt us, God, that we might awake and stay away from them, Lord. Help us, Father, to see what they're doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. My text is Jeremiah 51, verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Companion text is Revelation 17. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. That's what's in her cup. Whatever's in her cup leads to abominations, filthiness, fornication, Babel means confusion, Babylon, madness. In the last days, the Bible says they'll go after strange flesh, as in the days of Lot. They're reversing everything, turning things upside down, mixing male and female. And what we see here, it's not just a spiritual indoctrination. It's not just propaganda. But they are drugging the people. They are drugging the people. This is the third final part in a series on chemical cross-dressing. We explored the use of BPA, hormones and such like, how they're making women masculine and men feminine. Last week we examined the diet of pagan priests, contrasted it to a biblical diet that leads to strong, healthy, normal men and women. And we noted a long list of bad consequences of raising your testosterone in women by these xenoestrogens and such like. I meant from anything from rebellion to just, uh, just a long list of like 30 things that are happening in your life. And we don't need any extra temptation. You understand? The Bible says make not provision for the flesh. We don't need any extra temptation. You've got a wicked heart. We've got flesh that we're born with. We don't need to stir it up. You understand? We don't need to stir it up and have all these different temptations in your daughters. You know. What are they going to do? I'm not going to have anybody rule over me, they say. I'm not going to be submissive. I want to be like a boy. And the boys want to be like girls. What's happening to America today? We know what's happening to America. I proved it to you in the past two weeks. Whether you believe it or not, it's happening. It's not going to change anything whether you believe it or not. I'm telling you something. They have a plan. Today I want to end this series by calling your attention to how alcohol and recreation, recreational drugs as well as prescription drugs and psych drugs and such like are being used for two purposes. There's a twofold attack on Christians and really all men and women today by those who creep into houses, these evil men and seducers who are under Satan's control. The first thing they use is propaganda. Propaganda from the time you're a child. Hollywood, public education... All of your TV shows that so many have in their home, propaganda. But don't miss the fact, they're also using chemicals. Chemicals. They're using drugs to accomplish two things. What are they doing by the drugs, people? What are they doing by the drugs in your diet? Drugs. Number one, they're dulling and distracting your mind and body. The whole purpose, Orlando, is, dis is distraction. Dulling your mind and body. The second purpose of the drugs is to hinder your fertility, population control. And finally, to cross-dress the culture. Cross-dress the culture. So to dull and distract you, 
to hinder your fertility and cross-dress you. That's the goal. You say, why? What's the purpose of dulling and distracting people? What's the purpose in hindering everybody's fertility? Uh, What is the purpose in cross-dressing the culture and causing such madness and confusion by this wine of Babel? Well, folks, the result is the ultimate final one-world government before the Lord returns in flaming fire, taking vengeance and reigning. The final goal of all of this is the final beast system of Antichrist. That's the goal. And what I want you to see is that this final falling away is in part chemically contrived. Chemically contrived. This does not mean people are not responsible. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Ignorance is no excuse for defiling the temple. But I want you to understand that Satan first deceived with Gnostic ideas. Here was the plan. To get you to put things in your mouth, before Eve would put the poison in her mouth, before Eve would put the forbidden fruit in her mouth, before Eve would do such a thing, she had to first be deceived by the serpent, who the Gnostics worship as the Savior. So, you had to first have a deception of the world and of Christians mainly that said, hey, guess what, Christians? It matters not what you stick in your mouth. It matters not what you do in your body. You know what? Everything is about the Spirit. That's what the, not, that's what the book of 1 John is about. The book of 1 John is about, you know what? Your body does matter. What you do in your practical life does matter. It's not just all spirit. God wants your spirit to be cleansed from all filthiness, but He also wants your flesh, your body, to be holy and pure unto God. But what they did was they came in and they basically said, your body doesn't matter. Concentrate on the spirit. Okay, I get it now. Somebody's setting you up. And once Christians embraced this idea, the body doesn't matter. There are no rules concerning food. It doesn't matter what poisons I stick in my body. Once you have been drenched in that Gnostic idea, now the devil was able to bring in the chemical age. And we saw last week the full Gnostic goal. The full Gnostic goal was not only to keep you from uh, thinking that your body matters, uh, 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 make you think it doesn't matter, I mean. What the Gnostics wanted to do was reverse the sexes. So guess what? Once Christians were deceived into thinking it doesn't matter what they put in their mouth, they finally just opened their mouth and they partook of the queer Kool-Aid in a thousand different forms. Queer Kool-Aid. They're brainwashed into believing there's no responsibility or holiness associated with the body or with physical things. And the new versions help foster this deception. I've showed in many ways how the new Bible versions teach this Gnostic deception. Now, what I want you to see, we know Satan is behind all of this. The Gnostics, so-called, uh, these occult Christians, so-called, throughout the generations, the mystics that tried to cross-dress everybody spiritually, uh, the principal players for Satan in the 20th century that laid the framework for the final revolution, this chemical cross-dressing, the ones that sat down and laid the framework saying, you know what? We could use chemicals to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Who laid the framework for this thing? Why are there poisons in your food? Who's behind the soy movement? Who's behind uh, all this stuff in your water and in the drugs and, and, and everything just about that you buy? I mean, I'm telling you to escape what they have done to you. You pretty much have to learn how to feed yourself, how to read every ingredient, how to make your own shampoos and conditioners and toothpaste and all of these things. That's what you pretty much have to do. And you know what? Once they feminized all the men, who has the backbone to even want to even care about these things anymore? See? Let's look at the foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. The Rockefeller Foundation laid the framework. Bertrand Russell, H.G. Wells and his open conspiracy. Charles Galton Darwin, the grandson of Charles Darwin. And finally, Aldous Huxley and Julian Huxley, his brother. Now we know 
the Rockefellers finance much of the engineering, promoting, and organizing of the coming one world government. I mean, they raised up preachers, funded preachers, the World Health, Health Organization, vaccines, drugs, psychology, and who knows what else they're behind. In 1952, Darwin suggested using synthetic hormones to alter men and women for the perfect society. Turn me up a little bit, my dear brother. H.G. Wells said things might have to get bloody for some who will resist the indoctrination. He said the Constitution is actually in the way of this final conspiracy, this revolution. Bertrand Russell, we've quoted extensively in the past two weeks, he noted how diet and injections will be used. Bertrand Russell also said in his impact of society, of science on society, when the government controls the distribution of food, its power is absolute. Now you think about that for a second with Monsanto trying to control the seeds. You think about the laws where they're trying to make organic food uh, uh, basically illegal unless they control it. They don't want you growing your own food. They don't want you bypassing because, see, here's what they think. With television and public education and entertainment, we pretty much got you with the indoctrination. But if you happen to escape that, basically we're flooding your whole life with chemicals that are going to bring about what we want to accomplish anyway, physically, at least in your desires. And how many are taught to resist their desires? See, how many are taught to go against their feelings? This whole generation says, well, if I desire the same sex, it's okay. I mean, it, whatever I feel is what I should do. And, and everything is feeling. How many people actually have been taught to go against their feelings and follow what the Bible says? Hardly nobody. So pretty much once they get you feeling a certain way, they've accomplished their world, worldwide seduction. Once they control the food... They control everything, which is the reason right now there's a fight to keep you from being able to feed your family outside of their system. See, this is where it's going to end. This is why they're raiding the milk. This is why they're raiding all of these farmers. The whole idea is you need to be a slave, a servant to corporate farms that's injecting the food with hormones and antibiotics and everything else because they do not want you. Not only it's not just money. I promise money is, is a big reason in these corporations, but there's more to it than just money, I believe. They don't want you escaping the chemical cross-dressing. Now, to the Huxleys. Aldous and Julian were brothers. Aldous Huxley, we quote, quoted, he wrote The Brave New World back in 1932, which was a fictional account of a world controlled by dictators, but the only difference was the slaves willfully go along with the dictatorship. How did they get the slaves in Huxley's book to go along with the dictatorship? They were deluded and distracted by drugs, alcohol, pleasure, and from birth, they were manipulated by hormones. That's a world that Huxley described that was coming in 1932. That world is here today. Now, what in the world was Huxley's motive for writing such a book? Was he merely simply warning you about what is coming? Only the Lord knows, but there are some strong reasons where we have to wonder whether Huxley was actually exposing something or actually writing the framework of how to accomplish this. Huxley, according to the diary of Aleister Crowley, met with Crawley multiple times in 1930 before he wrote The Brave New World. According to witnesses, Huxley got stoned on peyote with Aleister Crawley. Crawley taught him how to use drugs. Two years later, after meeting with Crawley and learning about peyote and all of these things, uh, he writes The Brave New World about how governments can use these drugs to control people. Interesting. And then after he wrote The Brave New World, they discovered LSD 
acid. And Aldous Huxley became an acid head. And he died on an acid trip. In fact, the hippies said the whole foundation of the drug culture, the whole foundation of being enlightened and experienced by drugs, the whole foundation was laid in Huxley. He's our father. He taught us all of this. Timothy Leary says, I learned all of this from Huxley. So the whole hippie New Age movement was founded on Huxley. Now in Brave New World, Aldous Huxley said 2,000 pharmacologists and biochemists were subsidized. See, that's the Brave New World. This is the final one world government where the pharmacies, the pharmacologists and biochemists are basically controlled by the government to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Inside the book, people are controlled by a drug called Soma as well as alcohol. Years later, after 1932, in 1961, Aldous Huxley at California Medical School says there will be, in the next generation or so, a, pharmacolog a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak. Look how many women are on psychotropic medication right now. Look how many people, churches are filled, pastors are on psychotropic medication. Brain drugs. And those that are not might as well be because they're on all the other things that they put inside the diet and drugs. So this pharmacological method of making people love their servitude, of producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing, that's the first way, or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods, that's the second way, and this seems to be the final revolution. There it is. What did Huxley say was the final revolution? We've already mastered propaganda, he says. We've already mastered propaganda. We can control masses. We, we, we speak at night. We have our great politicians speak at night when the testosterone of men dips down and they're, they're, they're more open to be uh, deceived. Hitler did the same thing. He was a master of propaganda. He would have his speeches at night when the people uh, did not have any ability to withstand. And so uh, Huxley says we've mastered propaganda. The next front is the pharmacy. Pharmakia, sorcery, drugs to control people. And all I'm showing is not only are the drugs there to distract you and numb you, they're there to make men passive and women to be filled with testosterone to actually reverse, which is Satan's ultimate goal. God's highest earthly creation was man. To pervert mankind is Satan's goal. Jesus says in the beginning he made them male and female. Not male dash female. You understand? It's not a, Adam was not androgynous, brother. Adam was a male and Eve was female. And they complement one another. That's Jesus' ideal. That's, that's the creator's ideal. But Satan comes and says, no, let's mix them together. Let's make them male-female. Let's make them androgynous and pervert it. Uh, Huxley in 1962 in Berkeley Language Center, says today we are faced, I think, with the approach of what may be called the ultimate revolution, the final revolution, where man can act directly on the mind body of his fellows. The techniques of terrorism have been known from time immemorial. But if you're going to control any population for any length of time, he says we have to use something different than the Spanish Inquisition. We've got to learn to, to go beyond the Spanish Inquisition. If we're going to control the population for any length of time, you must have some measure of consent. In other words, consent must be manufactured. We are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which will enable the controlling oligarchy to get people to love their servitude. A number of the predictions, which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago, have come true or seem in process of coming true. There's a problem. 20% of the people are very, very difficult or almost impossible 
to hypnotize by the propaganda method alone. I mean, I, I don't know what stock to put in them, but there's various studies on YouTube to see how open you are to suggestion and manipulation, and maybe there's something to those things to take them and, and see if you basically are one of these people that are very open to propaganda and suggestion. But they've known for long, a long time that they've documented it over and over and over that 20% of the people basically are immune to their sorcery. But there are the various other methods. There is, for example, the pharmacological method. I mean, if you're not going to be deceived by their propaganda, if you're going to get outside the box of their propaganda, they'll make sure you're drugged, whether you like it or not, as we'll see at the end of the sermon. Whether you want to be drugged or not, you're in the doctor's office, you're going to get drugged. And not just with drugs for your body, but drugs for your brain. Drugs, psych drugs. Whether you like it or not, they're going to drug your children. See? This is one of the things I talked about in Brave New World. I invented a hypothetical drug called Soma. It was simultaneously a stimulant, a narcotic, narcotic, and a hallucinogen. If you applied several different substances, you could get almost all these results even now. Even the permissible mind changer alcohol is not entirely harmless. Pharmacologists are producing a great many new wonder drugs. In the hands of a dictator, these substances would be used to make people thoroughly happy, even in the most abominable circumstances. Then we can use the implantation of electrodes in the brain. I'm at Drudge Report today. So basically, here it is. Propaganda, drugs, chemicals, finally implants in your body. Drudge Report today says the military is working on right now ways to control rats by implanting things in their brain, see, And how far they are in that technology, who knows? If it's just now coming out in the news, they've obviously been working with these things. Then you got genetic modification, mixing the genes of various species. Uh, I meant, talk about Frankensteins. Talk about Frankensteins. Now, Aldous Huxley's brother was Julian Huxley. Now, you got to get this straight. Julian Huxley Huxley was a world-famous biologist and evolutionist, honored by Planned Parenthood. He was the first director of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. He was president of the British Eugenics Society. So notice that Aldous Huxley was the brother of this man who was pretty much worshipped around the world. And what did his brother Julian actually say? He says, it is quite true that any radical eugenic policy will be for many years politically and psychologically impossible. What he said was, rats, Hitler set us back some. For a while, this isn't going to be popular. I mean, everybody's going to look at what the Nazis did, and it's going to make what we're trying to accomplish difficult. But he says, but in the end, with propaganda, we'll be able to do the same things Hitler did, but on a mass worldwide scale. Eugenics. Controlling the gene pool. He says the lowest strata, allegedly less well endowed genetically, are reproducing relatively too fast. Therefore, they must not have too easy access to relief. Their children, he says, should not have access to relief. Too many of them will live. He said we have to do whatever we can to cause these children to die and to keep these undesirables from reproducing in the first place. Well, what better plan than to basically say, well, the dummies will go to Walmart and just eat whatever's there because it looks good because the picture looks appealing. So let's just basically, we'll get rid of a whole bunch of them that way. Folks, if you don't think that was the agenda, you need to study this a little more. Huxley said in 1926, Unless the civilized societies of today invent and enforce adequate measures for regulating human production, reproduction, they are doomed to decay. Folks, I'm telling you, the billionaires of this world, many of them believe this stuff wholeheartedly. They still believe what Huxley said in 1926. 
They are inventing and enforcing adequate measures for human reproduction. My point is, they are controlling the gene pool, controlling who is fertile and who is not by drugs. Now, the world loves its alcohol, which Huxley said is one of the main things they'll use. What about alcohol? It doesn't just distract you and numb you. First, there's the problem of hops in beer. Beer is made from hops. 99% of the beer sold today is made from hops. H-O-P-S, hops. What are hops? One of the most potent phytoestrogens, like soy, hops. So pretty much all beer has something like soy in it. That, it's made from soy. You say, why? Where does this come from? Well, where did soy come from? It came from a bunch of Buddhist priests who wanted to be feminized, pagan androgyny. The Catholic Church just adopted the same Babylonian androgyny and brought it into Rome and the Roman Empire. So Catholic priests, really, a lot of them are, are homosexuals, pedophiles, molesters. They're effeminate. So when you're at a monk, guess who basically put the hops in the beer? In medieval times, the Catholic priests, the monks in the monasteries, basically hops in beer was the soy of the Buddhist, the soy and tea of the Buddhist. Uh, the, the Buddhist pagans had tea and soy. The Catholics had hops, phytoestrogens, feminizing the men through phytoestrogens. Hops are closely related to marijuana, which is also a powerful phytoestrogen sharing the same chemical. Young women who would pick up the hops in farms to put in the beer would often fall asleep while working. Hops were blasted as a wicked weed in 1525 when they first started putting it in the beer. A petition was brought to Parliament in the reign of Henry VI saying that hops are destructive to the people. Get these things out of the beer. Not to mention the alcohol itself is destructive, but this makes it even worse, people. Ralph Barnes Grinrod, in 1843, says the remarks and experience of Professor Moosey of America contribute much to elucidate this, elucidate this interesting subject. In addition, he observes to alcohol, which is universally acknowledged to be a poison, beer contains a narcotic principle derived from the hop. At the age of 20 years, while occupied during the hay season upon my father's farm, I drank hop beer for about three weeks, which was induced to discontinue it, but was induced to discontinue it on account of a peculiar organic weakness, as well as a, diminu a, diminish a diminishing of the general strength, which I attributed to that beverage. And about two weeks from the time of ceasing to drink the beer, my strength was restored. I mean, they have this thing nailed, folks. They have this thing nailed. How many people drink beer? How many men, how many boys can't wait to think it's manly to go drink their first beer? I mean, they got you, man. I mean, you've got soy, you've got chemicals, you've got BPA, you've got hormones injected in your food. I, I mean, and then you've got the beer and, and the drug culture, which all does the exact same thing, makes boys feminized, weak. Why do, do hops make you weak? Here's a study. Plants used to produce alcoholic beverages contain estrogen-like substances, phytoestrogens. Observations that men with alcoholic cirrhosis often show symptoms of feminization. Now listen, we've been preaching on the street for years, and we would tell people there is no moderate drinking. Brother, we would preach. Brother Mike would hold up a big sign about what the Bible says about alcohol. Look at Proverbs 23. Make sure you drink wine moderately. Is that what it says? Look not thou upon the wine. How in the world can you get moderate drinking from something that says look not? What about the strange woman? The Bible says go not near the strange woman's house. Does it say be moderate with the strange woman? Or does it say abstain totally? 
Okay, so with alcohol, you are to abstain totally. Do you see it? That's the biblical, and we've been teaching that uh, uh, ever since I've been a preacher, just about. Let's see. Well, guess what? After all these years, after all these years of being mocked, guess what? The science has finally come around to confirm exactly what the Bible says. Hey, that's how it always be, sister. True science will always confirm exactly what the Bible says. Here's Professor David Nutt, Professor of Neuropsychopharmacology at Imperial College London. There is no such thing as a safe level of alcohol consumption. The idea that drinking small amounts of alcohol will do you no harm is a myth. Oh, if you think that's something, notice here. Just last month, London Telegraph. Now, remember when they came out and said, oh, drink red wine. It's good for your heart. It's got resveratrol in it. And what we said was, hey, folks, drink grape juice, okay? Why, why would you go drink something with poison in it to get some type of healthy property? That's ridiculous. Well, guess what now? All these years later, all these years later, January 7th, just last month, Red wine is bad for you, say experts. Experts dismiss supposed health benefits of wine and are set to rewrite the rule book on alcohol consumption. Expert, experts have now U-turned on the health benefits of red wine. Doctors will reportedly warn that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption and drinking just a small amount may in fact increase the risk of some cancers. Wow! They might not need alcohol anymore. They've got so many other things to feminize you, it might have run its course, see. But whatever the reason, whether these are just renegade scientists that are not in the system, that are finding things they're not supposed to find out, or whether or not they're just kind of done with alcohol, kind of like cigarettes, you know what I mean? It's like they use their propaganda to just overnight just basically convince people that smoking's bad. I mean, they're very powerful at what they're able to do with their propaganda, see. So they came after the tobacco companies and took their wealth and their empire from them and that type of thing, or at least some of it. And so they're very powerful when they get done with one drug because they've got so many others to replace it, see. But whatever the case, I want you to understand that alcohol, not all, I'm talking about alcohol itself, not just hops in the beer. Hops in the beer is bad enough, but alcohol itself, is responsible, in part, for feminizing boys and men, but it, uh, the ancient Greeks, I believe, knew this. It makes women masculine. You watch a woman in school who starts drinking. Her voice starts getting lower. She starts getting loud. She starts getting manly. And you say, what's, what's going on with these hard-boiled women? They smoke cigarettes and drink beer. Not to mention BPA and everything else. Everywhere you find a rough, tough, low-speaking, mean-looking, hard-faced woman, nine times out of ten, brother, she drinks alcohol. What that alcohol does is go in and makes her masculine. But look at the boys. You'll be in a hardware store and some fellow, ah, how you doing? You're like, whoa, what in the world's going on here? Who is this? You see some big old corn-fed boy. And he kind of, in some ways, looks like a girl. In some ways, you know. Um, I'm not saying he's not still a big corn-fed boy and can lift things and that type of thing, but he's being feminized, folks. He's being feminized. Alcohol will feminize you. Here's... The journal Steroids, 1977, suppression of testosterone production by ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol in adult male mice caused a drastic decrease in the concentration of testosterone. Just about every single case, at least hormonally, studies in mice will, uh, and rats will compare to the studies in humans. So what we see here, ethyl alcohol, that means the alcohol you drink, uh, produced a decrease in the male testosterone. Nicholas Emanuel, professor of medicine and director of the Division of Endocrinology and Metabolism, says alcohol alters critical hormone balance. 
diminished reproductive function in alcoholic men has been clinically noted over many years. And when young, healthy, non-alcoholic volunteers, Caleb, Jr., Xavier, were exposed acutely to alcohol, a fall in serum testosterone was consistently demonstrated. Once you stick it in your mouth, there goes your manhood. What, what little bit you have left from BPA and plastic water bottles and everything else that you've got from the time you're a baby, as well as what your mama drank when you're in the womb. Even moderate drinking in healthy women can lead to significant reproductive problems. Oh, now wait a second. So it gets, it gets rid of a woman's fertility to some degree, masculinizes the women, and feminizes the men. There you go. Well, I do not suggest you go out and drink beer and then try to take an antidote for it. But God has given somewhat of an antidote. And guess what? It's ginger and turmeric, turmeric, which are in the same exact family. Those are those pungent herbs that Buddha says, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't take ginger. Why? Because ginger and turmeric help you recover from the feminizing effects of the alcohol. Notice. A study was done on mice models and was exposed to alcohol solution. It was observed that the mice exposed to alcohol had their testosterone level decreased. Yes, of course they did. When these alcohol exposed mice were treated with turmeric, the level of testosterone went back to normal in the body. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. Ginger and turmeric. So let's uh, boot Buddha and start following the Bible. Amen? But let's do what's right and get rid of this whole mess. Now, here's new scientists in 1999. Real men don't drink. Isn't this what they you know, who controls these country songs? Who's financing the, contro- the, the country song about it's manly to drink beer? It's manly to get drunk. There's nothing manly about getting drunk. There's nothing manly about alcohol. It's all indoctrination. Somebody's financing the record company. Somebody's financing the music. That's why they're, they, they want boys to go out and think, oh, I'm going to be manly here. I'm going to drink. That's why they have it in the movie. Somebody's got to pay for the production of this movie. Advertisers pay for it in some ways. Real men don't drink, says new scientist. Boozing can actually eat away at a man's body. He may also find himself becoming less of a lad and more of a lady, Junior. You want that? Then, son, don't ever drink, okay? Don't ever look at the wine, Xavier. You understand that? Josiah, don't you ever look at the wine. Turn your eyes from it. People say, well, you're a wimp. You're a sissy. You're a girly boy. Say, you're a fool. Because the Bible teaches me to not even look at it. And science will tell you that it will make you girly. And it'll make the women loud and wrinkles all over their face. Make them old before their time. That's what cigarettes and alcohol do to women. You understand that? Makes them manly, rough, rebellious, loud, loud and stubborn, says the Bible. Here's another study. Alcohol is directly toxic, causing reduced testosterone levels in men. Testosterone levels declined after only five days. Prolonged testosterone deficiency may contribute to feminization. In premenopausal women, chronic heavy drinking can contribute to a multitude of reproductive disorders. Uh, what women need to know by Marianne Legato says a single study done by Finnish and Japanese investigators shows a rise on women's testosterone levels within two hours after drinking alcohol. Heavy drinkers often become menopausal earlier. There it is, folks. The man, it's just like everything. BPA and everything. The man lowers your testosterone. Women, boost it. Man, you become womanly. Woman, you become manly. There it is. No wonder there's such a push to get you off to college somewhere and teach you that it's normal to go drink Male and female rats exposed to alcohol or nicotine before birth had switched roles or behaviors. Wow. So you might already be born into this world with more feminine temptations as a boy. 
But you're going to have to quit yourself like a man and do what's right spiritually regardless of how you feel, folks. And I believe when you do that, God will begin to rebuild you. I do. Women, you're probably born. Many of you girls have been born because your mama was doing things that she either didn't know about or was just being disobedient to the preaching. And you've been raised with masculine desires from birth, wanting to play like a boy and act like a boy in so many ways. You can't go by your feelings, girls. You got to say, you know what, in, in, regardless of how I feel, I want to do what the Bible says. I want to be what, what, what God wants me to be. What's the pattern in the Bible for me to be? Virginia Hopkins Health Watch says alcohol and marijuana also raise estrogen levels. While men are getting less manly, women are getting more manly. Or to put it another way, men and women are starting to look more and more alike. Hey, folks, that's by design. This isn't an accident, folks. This was by design. Alcohol Oxford Journals tells us heavy alcohol consumption is associated with sterility, miscarriages, loss of female characteristics in the women. It is well known that acute alcohol intake leads to decreased, de decreased levels of testosterone in normally healthy men. We have shown in an earlier report that alcohol ingestion causes an acute elevation of the total testosterone levels in premenopausal women. The present result confirms our earlier findings. So after repeated study, after study, after study, alcohol raises a woman's testosterone, changes her body where it looks more manly, puts facial hair all over her, causes her voice to get low, causes her desires to not be... Uh, to not just want to get along and cooperate and be a helpmeet to a man, but to say nobody's going to tell me what to do and to be loud and stubborn, not to mention all the other health problems associated with that high testosterone, such as breast cancer, etc. Healthguidance.org says testosterone is not the dominant hormone in the female makeup. Therefore, they are usually unable to control the effect of testosterone. This explains why they are more prone to carrying out acts that are normally not in their nature when drinking alcohol. It's not just that they're being deluded and inebriated. That's part of it. But also they're getting a rush of testosterone. And they're not used to... Ha well, nowadays they probably are used to having it with the BPA and everything. But when they get this rise in testosterone, they go crazy. The stimulation of testosterone initially makes them loud as the bravado effect kicks in. The stimulation of testosterone starts with the first sip. So women, stay away from alcohol. It'll make you manly. Boys, stay away from alcohol. It'll make you girly. We got a problem, though, folks. You say, well, pastor, I don't know what this sermon's about. I don't drink. Well, I'm, I'm preaching to your children, amen? I, I don't want them to ever drink, amen? amen? But, folks, there's another problem. Alcohol is not just something you stick in your, in your mouth. Alcohol is also something you rub all over your body every single day. And while you may not be rubbing enough alcohol to get you intoxicated, you are probably rubbing enough alcohol on your body to get into your bloodstream to start causing the effects of masculine testosterone rises in the women and feminization of the male. Alcohol is not just something you drink in this day and age. Let me show you. Here is uh, Dr. Edward Group, 2015. Although you may never pick up an alcoholic beverage, you could still be regularly exposing yourself to the detrimental health effects of alcohol. Household products, for example, often contain ethyl alcohol. You go around your house, look at your chapstick, look at your uh, mouthwash, look at your toothpaste, look at your shampoo, look at your conditioner, look at your deodorant, look at everything in your house, unless you're... Uh, a natural fanatic, you understand? Unless you understand these things and take it seriously. You look at everything that you stick on your body, it's going to have like five different alcohols in the ingredient list. I mean, look, get your purses out right now and start looking inside there and start handing them up here. Bring them up here. Let, let me see all your stuff. Because I, I want to show you how much alcohol you're sticking on your body and in your mouth. Nobody's helping me. All right. I'm going to have a purse. Okay. We got one in the back, willing to do, okay. Let me show you here. Although you may never pick up an alcoholic beverage, you could still be regularly exposing yourself. Household products, for example, often contain ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol is the same thing you drink, folks. I don't drink, but the same thing people drink. 
Alcohol is an endocrine disruptor. What does that mean? A hormone disruptor. It actually reverses the hormones. Alcohol, not just what you drink, but what you rub on your body. Pesticides, we know, BPA, phthalates, have received quite a bit of attention. Well, where are the Christians at on all of that? One substance that's extremely prevalent but gets less attention is alcohol. You don't drink, doesn't matter. When applied topically, alcohol can enter into your bloodstream. The use of hand sanitizer is rampant. Where'd that whole thing come from? It's like overnight, people became addicted to spraying. And they say, swine flu, swine flu, swine flu. And everybody's like, spray, 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 all this stuff. What happened to washing your hands with soap? Well, what ha- well, why are you squirting that stuff all over? Antibacterial, it'll kill everything. You want to make a bet? You're just spraying alcohol all over you. That's what you're doing. And other junk that shouldn't be on your body. Hand sanitizer is rampant. Everyone has a bottle of rubbing alcohol in their medicine cabinet, but other items include body lotions, probably like five or six alcohols in your lotion, cosmetic oils, baby oils, aftershave. Man gets there, oh, yeah, I'm manly now. I'll put this stuff all over my face here. Air fresheners, eye makeup, shampoos. Uh, you look at all the shampoos, even the healthy one, five different alcohols in there. Insect repellents, hair dyes, dishwasher and laundry detergents, perfumes, uh, deodorants, paint. Research has shown that using hand sanitizer increases blood concentration of ethanol. In other words, studies shown, yes, it got in your bloodstream. One study that focused on hospital employees found that over 30% exhaled low levels of ethanol just one minute after using a hand sanitizer. In one case, a one-month-old baby suffering from lethargy was found to be intoxicated from an alcohol-soaked gauze used to treat the umbilical cord. There really is no debate about the negative health implications and its disrupting effect on the endocrine system. If you want to fix this problem, avoid alcoholic beverages, number one. Number two, check the ingredient list of the other products that you put in your body or on your body for alcohol, ethanol, ethyl alcohol, ethyl hydrate, ethyl hydroxide, and methyl carbonyl. Notice this OL every time, you know, you can spot the alcohols. They're pretty much uh, all similar. They're all these alcohols. VirginiaHopkinsKits.com says here are the ingredients listed in a popular alcohol-based hand sanitizer. The active ingredient is ethyl alcohol, 65%. That's ever clear. Jack Daniels. Inactive ingredients are water, but there's also azopropyl, rubbing alcohol, glycerin, carbon or fragrance, aminomethylpropanol, propylene glycol, that's antifreeze, azopropyl myristrate. Ethyl alcohol is also known as ethanol. Pure alcohol, grain alcohol, drinking alcohol. Now, they add other things to it and process it in a different way so you don't just go drink it out of the gas pump. But ethyl alcohol is used in cosmetics to enhance absorption of other ingredients. We were making conditioner the other night and studying, well, what exactly do each of these ingredients do? And we got to alcohol in the conditioner and realized that what it does is it causes all the ingredients to mix together well. But not only that. What they do is they put the alcohol in the shampoos and the odorants and conditioners and lotions because the alcohol defats and gets rid of all the oils that are up here and causes whatever chemicals they have, including the alcohol, to seep into your bloodstream faster. Alcohol is to make it go into your bloodstream faster, see. As they say here, It will move through the skin and into the bloodstream more easily. Alcohol improves penetration of other chemicals through the skin by defatting the skin, which is a disruption of the oils in the skin. This is also the quality that makes alcohol dry out the skin. Isopropyl alcohol, also called rubbing alcohol, is a known neurotoxin. Fragrances can contain just about anything now. Nobody knows how many of the chemicals and fragrances accumulate in the body. One ingredient present in most fragrances are phthalates. Phthalates are known endocrine disruptors. So here you got the fragrance, you got your alcohol and your shampoo and lotion, and what happens is it gets into your body, and whatever those fragrances are get into your body, and then you say, you know what, I'm not going to obey you anymore, and I'm getting sick and tired of you, husband, telling me what to do. Go wash your hair, put some lotion on there, and all of a sudden, who knows, who knows how many of your temptations in the home are coming from putting stuff inside your body like this. See, it's crazy what's happening to people today. Um, 
Aminomethylpropanol, another alcohol compound. You can see the OL there is an endocrine disruptor. And I checked a whole bunch of them. They all are. Hand sanitizers are convenient, but the research does not show them to be more effective than hand washing with soap. In fact, this, this antifreeze, this in-break fluid and antifreeze, this propylene glycol, EPA considers it so toxic that it requires gloves, protected clothing, and goggles to bury it, to dispose of it. I don't understand this. You've got to use special suits and goggles to take this stuff and bury it. It's like mercury in the dentist office. They have to have these suits and things, but yet they're going to stick it in your fillings. They're going to put all this stuff in your lotion and shampoos with alcohol to make it absorb quickly into your body. We've got a crazy world, you know, a crazy world. Natural News 2015 says using hand sanitizer causes you to absorb 10,000% more emasculization chemicals that feminize men. So here's what they do is they sit there and they say, oh, let me get that Walmart receipt. Oh, I got to get some hand sanitizer. Receipt, 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 receipt. Now that BPA, 10,000% more goes into your body. Alcohol, spray it all over you. Spray it all over you. You don't drink, but you dose yourself and baptize yourself in alcohol, I tell you. And then the essential oils. Finally, the health movement comes in and says, oh, well, you could use clove, you could use all these essential oils. And then you look in the back of it, it's like number one ingredient is alcohol. They do have some that are not alcohol essential oils, but, you know, you're putting all that stuff all over your body, breathing it. So the alcohol in shampoos and deodorants is not only an endocrine disruptor, but any other endocrine disruptors in the ingredient list will now move quickly 10,000% more into your bloodstream. Allison Aleo, professor at University of Michigan, analyzed all the studies for the past few decades. She found that using old-fashioned soap will cut down on gastrointestinal and respiratory infections. But antibacterial and alcohol-based sanitizers were either less effective or sometimes linked to more illness. Isn't that something? Using soap makes you less sick. Using alcohol and the antibacterial makes you more prone to getting sick. Wow. You know, back in the 90s, I advocated for frugality and self-reliance and coming Y2K and earthquakes and all the things the Bible says are coming. I advocated getting back to the basics. We started getting back to the basics books, uh, studying in detail how to make your own lotions and conditioners and shampoos and all these things. And it's taken a long time to try to figure out how to do these things. Um, we did it mainly to be self-reliant because you're not always going to be able to go down to Walmart. But there's another reason now to present your family with a land of Goshen and to put a hedge about your family to know how to take natural ingredients. And many times you'll find that the things you can create, if you were to sell them in a store, they would be twice or three times the amount of what you're buying in Walmart. See, Let me give you one key real quick to how to do this. When it comes to pharmacy drugs, find out, at least this is my view of the thing, find out what the drug supposedly does. What switches does it turn on and turn off? And then find out in the natural realm what turns on and turns off those same switches. Now apply that to your shampoos and deodorants and everything else. Take your ingredient list of your favorite shampoo, conditioner, lotion, whatever it is, deodorant, and go through and find out why are these things in the ingredient list. What are they doing? Then go find the natural way to do each of those things. Some of those things you don't even want it to do, see. But find out which of these things do I want to do, what switches do I want to turn on, and then go duplicate it in nature, and uh, you will be in a lot better situation. Well, Junior, Caleb, real men also don't smoke pot. You understand that? There's nothing manly about pot smoking. Talk about killing a man's drive to do or finish anything. I mean, I grew up with pot smokers. 
And I tell you what they do. They sit back with a bong or a joint, and they don't do anything. Oh, they love to talk about Star Trek and whatever else. Oh, they just want to talk and talk and science fiction. Oh, they just think they're so smart and enlightened, but they're the stupidest people ever you ever see as a pot smoker. He is the laziest, stupidest person, but nobody on earth thinks they are so smart than a pot smoker. You understand that? Stay away from pot. Stay away from marijuana. Hidden religion, the greatest mysteries and symbols of the world's religion, says texts from around the first century, mention the use of marijuana in China to facilitate communication with spiritual entities. References to marijuana use have also been found among the artifacts linked to pagan religious sects in Europe. The American Indians use marijuana to talk to their dead grandpa. He'll come as a coyote, and they can talk to the coyote as their dead grandpa. I meant pot is nothing to mess around with. It's demonic. It's demonic. Todd T. Brown, Endocrine Effects of Marijuana, says in 1972, Harmon provided the first report of marijuana's clinical impact on the endocrine system, that's your hormones, with the initial description of marijuana-associated gynecomastia. That's men starting to grow women parts. Studies in male rodents have shown significant decreases in testosterone. Similar effects have been demonstrated in primates. In the rhesus monkey, THC reduced testosterone levels by 65%, which lasted one hour. Lower testosterone levels have been reported in chronic marijuana users compared to non-users. And acute decreases in both LH and testosterone have been observed after marijuana smoking. So just like the hops, marijuana is the ultimate witch doctor, transgender, androgynous. And there it is. You know, the witch doctor, he, he, he was the pervert. He was the hermaphrodite. He was the... The, the, the sodomite of the tribe and uh, marijuana smoke. The hippies came in. Did the hippies look very manly, Brother Orlando? I meant Led Zeppelin. That they're wearing women's clothes, women's shirts, women's hair, women's earrings, and they come. And what are they doing? Smoking pot. Smoking pot. Peak testosterone says marijuana assaults your precious hormones in almost every negative way possible, especially testosterone. One study after another has shown that cannabis lowers testosterone. No wonder they want to make it legal. If you've ever noticed that your heavy pot-smoking friends lacked a little motivation, now you know. How, many, how much of that is still in you, I wonder? Maybe you just learned patterns or habits, but how much of that pot-smoking lifestyle is still in you, physically or at least in your conduct? And, you know, you've got to be stoned to smoke pot, brother. You really do. You'd have to be stoned to smoke pot. Oh, but wait a second. George Soros. You say, who's jo George Soros? I think he's like a billionaire, isn't he? You know, George Soros calls himself a kind of God. He says, I'm a kind of God. He says, I admit my self-centered ways have left millions in poverty. But you know what? George Soros says, I support legal marijuana. Why? Oh, it's not for some liberty issue, folks. It's not to get the government out of things. He wants legal marijuana for a reason. Catherine Albrecht says, ah, he wants to legalize it, but not for the reasons he's telling us. A testosterone-reduced population will be less aggressive and more docile overall. They want to keep you on pot because they already got the alcohol, but, you know, some don't drink alcohol. They, they need as many things as they can to make you passive. And if all of that's not enough, your alcohol and pot smoking, now you've got these other drugs. Now you've got psych drugs. Here's from Time. Anxiety drug overdoses in U.S. hit record levels. While the quantity of prescriptions filled tripled between 1996 and 2013, the number of overdoses quadrupled during the same period, the team reported in the American Journal of Public Health. They've got kids everywhere on psych drugs. I've been warning about it for many, many years, mainly the suicide effects of the psych drugs, but we haven't mentioned much the fact that these psych drugs actually cross-dress you, that, that they are powerful, powerful endocrine disruptors. But it's not just the psych drugs, folks. There's heartburn drugs, Tagamet, Zantac, Prizolec. There's Valium, Xanax, heart medications, antibiotics. 
All of them do the same thing. And one way to tell is look at the drug. I don't recommend taking any of them. But look at the drug. Look at the back. Look for side effects. And when you see gynecomastia, there you go. Ah, you know what it's doing. So here it is. All the drugs pretty much do it. All the drugs. One reason all the drugs do it is because the very coating is made from phthalate. Notice Natural News says phthalates, the chemical found in many vinyl and plastic products, tends to feminize boys, altering their brains to express more feminine characteristics. The study has been published in the Journal of Andrology. Phthalates are found in vinyl products, in the plastic coating of insides of dishwashing machines. What very few people know about phthalates is that they are used in the coatings of pharmaceuticals. This means that many people taking certain pharmaceuticals are unknowingly eating phthalates. Here's a little bit of your shower curtain here. Let's eat it. How do we know phthalates are used in pharmaceuticals? Look at the Google Books link provided. It shows a page from a handbook of pharmaceutical manufacturing formulations, over-the-counter products. In it, a recipe is given for manufacturing a clear enteric coating. The ingredients are acetone, purified water, hydroxpropyl, methyl, cellulose, phthalate, vanillin, acetylated monoglycerides, and alcohol. These phthalate chemicals are also used in antidepressant drugs. So not only just in the coating of the pill, but in the drug itself. The drug companies are pushing to have expectant mothers dose with antidepressant drugs during pregnancy. They want everybody, the drug companies want everybody to be on these drugs. Your children, everybody, uh, under the guise of keeping you from being depressed. Of course, they want to make a lot of money, but it, there's more behind it than just making a lot of money. They want you feminized. They want you feminized. Natural News it is not exactly an anti-homosexual site, believe me. But even he says, we are going to be looking at the mass feminization of males in modern society. Many would say this hormonal shift is already underway. A recent 326-page report from the state of Denmark warns that today's children are exposed to hundreds of gender bender chemicals found in products like sunscreen lotions, moisturizing creams. The title of the article, Why Boys Are Turning Into Girls. Where in the world are the Christians? Where are the Christian pastors? It says a pastor is supposed to be a bishop, a watcher. The Bible says God's people are supposed to watch. They're supposed to be leading the world. They're supposed to be the ones that are the head of the world and not the tail. But you know what? Christians are way behind decades on all this stuff. It's sad. You know why it's sad? Because a whole generation of Christians have been raised lesbians and homosexuals. Do I put the blame entirely upon this chemical cross-dressing? No. I put it on the propaganda, the public school, the indoctrination. But I also put it, the temptation at least, the stumbling stone, these chemicals. There's no excuse for being a sodomite. There's no excuse for not walking in the role that God has called you to walk in, dressing like you're supposed to dress, acting like you're supposed to act as a female or as a male. But I'm telling you, Christians should have been on top of this thing instead of so stubborn and fat and bullheaded and lazy. But they're not done, folks. They will now use, you've got to remember what Bertrand Russell said. Not just diet and injections, but also injunctions. So he said, we're going to use diet, injections, and injunctions. What's an injunction? They're going to pass laws to say, you're abusing your child, Brother Nathan. You're abusing your child. You know, I've had Christians call me up. And so they're wanting to put my child all around the nation. They call me up and say, they're wanting to put my child on psych drugs. I say, brother, how did they know anything about your child? Oh, we broke down and put him in public school. And now they're saying he's depressed and they want to force him to put psych drugs. I've had people call me up a few years ago and say, I just got to a payphone. I just got to a payphone, Pastor Joey. Oh, they're putting me on all kinds of drugs. They're putting me on all kinds of drugs. What do I do? What do I do? I'm in a psych ward. They're forcing me to take these things. I've been trying to take the pills and hide them from them, but sometimes they just force it down you. I warned years ago that George Bush was putting mental health screening throughout all the schools. 
Public schools, they walk around, they wait for your child to go to the nurse, and they say, oh, you're depressed. The, the pharmaceutical companies, they want to make money. Think of the thousands they could have if they put all your kids on psych drugs. But if you think that's the only reason, folks, I'm telling you, they want all these children to be dumbed down and passive and reversed in their hormones. Now you got New American just the other day. Feds seek mental health testing of all children and adults. Next time you visit your doctor, be careful how you respond to his questions or you may just be branded mentally ill and subjected to treatment. See, in the 1960s, they forced all doctors, if there's the slightest little evidence of child abuse, they have to report it to CPS. And the doctors rose up and said, we don't want to do that. We want to use our own judgment. They said, no, we'll take your license away. You must report even the slightest thing to the authorities. I'm not a fan of child abuse. You better believe that. God forbid. But there's a lot of people that get accused wrongly, without a trial, without due process. Do you want to make the medical decisions for your children, or do you want a bureaucracy that's in bed with pharmaceutical companies? The doctors are just puppets of pharmaceutical companies. You want these people telling you? that not only do you have to take this for your heart medication or for your diabetes or your arthritis, but also for your emotional well-being, you must take the psychotropic medications. And if you resist, we will take your children away. I mean, I've been in a hospital with a few of you, and I've seen them walk down and say, well, you're going to have this operation, and if you don't, police are upstairs, we'll go get them. Well, not only are they forcing operations upon you, but they're going to force your children to take drugs. They're going to make sure nobody escapes out of this net, folks. You may just be branded mentally ill and subjected to treatment. That is because a panel advising the Obama administration in partnership with big psychiatry wants to make doctors subject all American adults and children over the age of 12 to screening for alleged mental health disorders. Then anyone found to harbor any alleged mental disorder, including children as young as 8, should undergo therapy, often including powerful psychotropic medications that experts say have dubious value but often come with well-documented and highly dangerous side effects such as suicide and cross-dressing. And notice what people do. Every time there's another school shooting or mass shooting in public, some say, take away the guns! Others say, no, it's not about guns. Are you going to take away the cars? Are you going to take away the knives? It's not about guns. But then everybody comes together in agreement. Says, well, one thing we can agree on, right? All you gun right advocates, can we all agree on one thing? We need better mental health. Do we not? Well, we need mental health screening. That way, if we can get all these people before they go shoot up a school with mental health screening, we can make sure that no nut has a gun. I hope you realize what's happening. Who's mentally ill? Whoever they say is mentally ill. It's subjective. It's relative. So this is a way of getting guns out of the hands of whatever Americans are left with guns, brother, as they also feminize you and force you to take your queer Kool-Aid, whether they inject you with it or whether they rub it on your body or whether you just take it in your body, ingest it. My last verse for you today is Matthew 16. O ye hypocrites, says Jesus, our Lord, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? You are in the last days, people. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The Bible says the children of Issachar were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. 
We should not be ignorant of Satan's devices, so I'm calling you to quit yourself like men. I'm calling you to wake up. I know this is a small flock here, oh ye little flock. But I'm praying God will use the information to wake Christians up, whoever stumbles upon our sermons. And maybe God will give other pastors an awakening to understand what's happening. You'll be called everything if you try to escape these things. What does that matter? What does that matter? They've got them brainwashed. They've got them brainwashed. Dear Father, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we will break through this chemical cross-dressing, that you would open the eyes of many pastors to see. Oh, Lord, there's many that are in their 70s or 80s, maybe, that, this is so foreign to them, except for the Lester Roloff types. They can't conceive that such a thing could have ever happened. But Lord, I pray that they'll just stop and look back over these past few decades and realize something's wrong. Something's wrong. We can't keep doing the same thing over and over. Something's wrong. And God, I do believe with all my heart that you've given us the light to see. That they are producing temptation stumbling blocks in the people by these drugs, beauty products, and our very food that people are eating. God, help us be diligent, awake. And God, any young girl that is given a chance to grow up without those temptations, what a blessing it'll be. Any young man that becomes more motivated, more masculine, strong, what a blessing that'll be. Any middle-aged women, Lord, that suddenly start having feelings and desires for their husband to be soft and compliant. Marriages being saved. Children being saved. that we make not provision for the flesh, Lord. Help us, dear God, cleanse us. And Father, although we're closing this series this week, may it not be closed to the people. Open their hearts, Father, that they may save their children. We've got enough temptation in this age, Lord. Empower us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, thanking you for the blood and for eternal salvation and the hope of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, do you have any comments or...